Hello, everyone, and welcome to Asian Viewpoints. I'm Mary Sit. Well, in this age of fast-paced video games, animated TV shows, how can books and storytelling compete? Well, meet Woody Kwan. He's a master at storytelling, and he has published and written and illustrated more than 100 books. Woody, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. Good seeing you again, Mary. Woody, you have uh, a fun job. I mean, you write children's books, you illustrate them, but you also go into the schools and do author book talks. And that's got to be tough, getting those kids' attention. They're so, you know, the sh- their attention is so short with, so, with their phones and TikToks and everything. How do you capture that attention and talk to them? It's not actually that difficult for me. I think I've had a lot of experience. I think also I'm a kid at heart, even though I'm 51 now, I still <laughs> feel like a kid. <laughs> so I feel like I connect with them really well. Um, for me, ever since the beginning, when I first started, like uh, I didn't like having the kids not respond to me. So mm-hmm. like, I felt bad if, if there was just one kid that wasn't paying attention. So I had to like elevate my game and just be more excited and be more animated just to get that one kid. So I'm always kind of looking around for, you know, which of the kids are, you know, enjoying it and which ones are not. And I'm trying to make sure I get every single one. And so in time, I think that just helped me develop my, you know, performance to have more animation, more movements, more facial features, more, you know, voice inflections. And so, yeah. So it's really like theater, right? It really is. Yeah. 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 A one man show. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm a comedian on stage, but, (laughs) uh, you know, but it's a lot easier with the kids. I mean, they're just so loving. Well, it's been about maybe 27 years or more since you launched your career as a book author and publisher with your debut debut book called Humpty Dumpty After the Fall, based on the little children's rhyme that all the kids here know, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Tell me about that book and why it was so instrumental. I actually started it um, as a degree project at uh, college at Rhode Mm -hmm. Island School of Design. So it was one of the, you know, top art schools in the country. And my professors were some of the top, you know, uh, professors, illustrators, illustrators, of children's books. And so mm-hmm. I was like, before I leave here, I've got to get all the knowledge I can from them. So I uh, did a degree project with David McCauley, who uh, is a Caldecott award-winning <clears throat> children's book author and illustrator, mm-hmm. and also Barry Moser, who's <clears throat> very established, uh, over 200 books published and uh, winning awards as well. And so they kind of helped guide me through the process and Woody, your Humpty Dumpty, the character Humpty Dumpty, is, it's an egg, of course, but the egg doesn't have a face. And you did that on purpose. Tell me why. When I first came up with the idea, I was looking at uh, old, rare, valuable uh, books because mm-hmm. uh, I worked as a librarian assistant at Rhode Island School of Design Library. And I noticed that the rare books and the old books had only the Humpty Dumpty stanza and nothing else, but but all the other nursery rhyme um, had a much longer version. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I was just inspired then because I was like, well, somebody, I mean, it just felt wrong that it wasn't, you know, finished, I think. And so it was on a Sunday and, you know, there weren't a lot of kids awake at the time when I was there. So I had a lot of free time. And so I felt like, uh, I was just inspired. I felt like God just came and just, you know, kind of like work magic with with my hands Uh and my brain and my, Uh feelings, emotions, and and it just came out. So within a few hours, by the end of my shift, I had not only the first draft written, but also every single illustration sketched out on a storyboard form. So in just a few hours, I had that book pretty much laid out just like that. And so through inspiration, it came. And the reason why I didn't do the face on it was it was such an iconic figure. It was hard to come up with the perfect face. So I wanted, uh, kids, adults, people everywhere to know that they have a face. They could, anybody could be Humpty Dumpty. They could put their own face on Humpty Dumpty, have a bad day. Uh, Everything looks, you know, horrible. They want to give up, but you have, you know, a faith and hope and, uh, you know, you have God's loving hand right there for you just to reach out to at any time. Because after Humpty Dumpty falls, he's not just a cracked egg. He picks himself up, right? And keeps going. And that's sort of the message to kids. And in your classrooms, when you travel all over to schools around Texas, you um, 
you have that black egg and they, and you draw in someone's face, usually a favorite teacher, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I, it's called the million faces of Humpty, my okay. presentation. So I'm traveling across the country. Uh, and I used to go all across the country, but nowadays you're right. I focus mostly uh, in and around Texas. We have all the kids help me create Humpty Dumpty's new face and they get to volunteer and pose for the arms and legs and face oh, that and sounds on great. the teacher with the coolest hair. And then yes, it usually is named after a teacher, principal or gym coach. And then the schools get to keep the drawing and uh, frame it up and hang it up for everybody to enjoy. For many and years. then 10 years and 20, 20 books later, you published a sequel, Humpty Dumpty Saved the Day. But instead of talking about that, let's skip over to what you're doing right now. It sounds very exciting. Tell me about your latest book you're working on. The project I'm uh, most, uh, I think I'm most interested in looking at is a book about disc golf. Because okay. I've been playing a lot of disc golf and that's been my new uh, hobby lately. Okay. And so disc golf is, is a disc, like almost like a Frisbee, but it's a disc, yes. right? And you toss yes. it into a basket? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Um, yeah. It's basically the same rules of regular golf, but mm -hmm. yes, you have different shaped discs that are smaller than a Frisbee, but some can go really far. Some are more for putting for accuracy, some kind of in between. So yeah. tell me about the book. This a little boy who finds yes. a disc. Yes. Uh, it's about uh, a little boy who uh, has a hard time uh, making friends and he uh, tried other types of sports. You know, he's not tall enough for basketball or big enough for football or has a stamina yet for soccer or he tries to do, and he just doesn't fit in. He feels very lonely. He finds a disc, a used disc that's lost in the park. And then he sees other people throwing these discs in that park and he starts throwing it and start. So he starts building a community and starts making friends and he's accepted into the, you know, the sport and he starts, uh, you know, getting better and, but then he loses this disc and the disc goes on its own journey where the <laughs> disc will get lost and thrown away and traded. And, you know, animals might, uh, you know, chew it, it up and fly <laughs> off, you name it. It just goes on its own journey, but eventually it comes back to like a used disc golf shop where he see, finds it, that original disc, which meant a lot to him because it really changed his life. But by that time he found the disc, he's a young adult, but now he's, uh, uh, you know, like a, a champion disc golfer and he's very successful with lots of friends and it really changed his life. Woody, you are Chinese, born in Cambodia and you fled a war-torn country with your family as refugees. Tell me how all of that influenced what you do today. For me, as an immigrant coming here to America, uh, I have that hunger because, I mean, we were literally hungry from, you know, Cambodia. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were starving in Cambodia uh, during um, those times, during uh, the war and the famine. But um, so I used to be a lot skinnier and now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you came over here as a kid? I was three. Okay. Yeah, but do you still remember old. those days in, in Cambodia where you, there wasn't enough food to go around? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember I loved eggs. And so uh, my, I always like my mom to make fried eggs. She would tell me a little story that when we were in Cambodia, that we like, she would take me out to go eat noodles. We didn't have a lot of money. So, uh, but eggs were expensive in Cambodia at the time too. So, um, so she always uh, said that I loved eggs as a little baby. And I just wanted eggs with my noodles. And, um, and so she would find me the eggs and then my brothers and sisters would be, get jealous. Oh, he gets the <laughs> eggs and we don't, you know, you're spending money on him and not on us. And, you know, cause I was the baby, I guess I was the youngest of five. And, um, and so I always uh, just loved eggs. I know you weren't asking about eggs, but I, thought but it was I think it's great. You know what, Woody? I think it's great because your mom gave you eggs over the other kids and eggs became iconic in your work today. Yes. Humpty Dumpty, the egg, right? Yeah. I mean, how perfect is that? <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. So Woody, we want to get a copy of your books. Do we go to Amazon or, where, or do we directly buy from you? Or how does it work? Go to your website? Woodtea.com, W-O-O-D-T-E-E.com is my website. And and so uh, pretty soon it will be, you will be able to get it from there personalized as well. So I can also, I like when I sign the books, I can also do a personalized illustration. So if it's for That's a great. child or for a gift, right. uh, if they, people let me know who it's going to, their first name, and then what they like to do, the, what hobby they have. Uh -huh. I usually I like to draw them as a little Humpty Dumpty character in the book. Oh, that's great. 
So I do that when I go visit the schools. I like to make it a little extra special. Uh -huh. um, so wherever they go, um, wherever I go, I want to make sure that they really love the book. So therefore right. they will love books and they will right. love reading. They will love the artwork. They will, you know, I want to inspire them, not just with the books, but also with my presentations and, mm -hmm. you know, just making them laugh and excited so that they see books in a very positive way, as opposed to, you know, just something that's uncool and they just want to be on their phones and TikTok <laughs> all the time or anything like that. So what do you really makes excited. me want to be a kid again so I can sit in and listen to one of your lectures? <laughs> yes, you're invited. <laughs> you're a parent volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much and good luck with that book on golf disc. <laughs> Sounds really thank nice. You. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and be sure to subscribe. I post a new video every Thursday and reply in the comments who you'd like to see on the show. I'm Mary Sitch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.